Hey and welcome! In today's video I wanted to show you some of my marker practice. These markers were sent to me by Artx. A-R-R-T-X. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, they were sent to me a while ago. I have the 36 skin tone set and another set with 80 colors. Um, I can't find the 80 color set on the website. I don't know if they turned it into the 90 color set, because my markers have a brush nib, but the 80 color set I found on the website are markers with a fine point, so I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. First I had to reorganize them in the order they should be in, because I couldn't find my swatch sheet and I had to make another one. I also wanted to try out this marker paper. I bought it with the intention to use my markers more, but markers are still so much of a mystery to me, I feel like I always need to prepare myself before I can just grab them. After I finished swatching, I started to experiment with the skin tones. I used some of the skin tones and then layered a warm grey over them. This is something that I saw in a tutorial and I wanted to try it out. The tutorial I'm referring to is in this magazine. I, I'm not quite sure what this is, to be honest. There are a bunch of illustrations and some tutorials and I think interviews or something, I, I don't know, um, this is in Japanese so I have no clue what I'm looking at. This magazine was sent to me by Kuretake because last year I made a illustration for them for their Inktober set and they advertised it in this magazine, so they were so kind to send it to me and show me the advertisement. Okay, so here's the tutorial that I saw. Um, I really really like this illustration because it's so desaturated. One of the things that I find so intimidating about markers is just the brightness and saturations of them. With watercolors you can build a lot of stuff up. Now the only problem is that I have no idea what's going on because I can't read Japanese, but to me this looks like there was first a skin tone applied and then they went over it with some different color, but maybe they only did the eyes because of the brush placement, but I thought that I could just try out to mute down the colors a bit with a different color, that's why I used the warm gray. And uh, I actually really like this look. Um, again, I'm not sure if the artist of the tutorial did what I did. But before I try any of that out, I thought it might be a good idea just to doodle a little and loosen up. So I'm gonna let you enjoy this part of the video and I'll see you later.
So here I decided to try out the muted skin color and I really like the final result. Um, I think the scariest part of using markers is that phase before everything dries and blends and looks so uh, stripy. So that's something I always try and keep in mind uh, while I work, that it will eventually look a bit better. I also really like the approach of doing hair on this one. Once I was done with coloring, I used a micron pen in black in combination with the Copic pen in sepia to emphasize some of the lines to make it look a bit more finished and interesting. And then I spent the rest of the evening to prepare some sketches and line them. I didn't film it because it's not really interesting, me lining things. Here's the liner that I prepared and I was really looking forward to coloring the sitting girl but before that I wanted to do something low pressure so I did the head and the fruit just to warm up and get back into it. Before I decide on the color, I always do some swatches right next to it and blend it with other colors just to see what the final result might look like. And because I don't use these that often, I always make some notes right next to it with the number. So the next time I'm using them, I'm not only going to have the swatch sheet but also some drawings and the color notes. So working on this paper was really nice, I felt like I had plenty of time to blend, but it does buckle a bit which surprised me, um, again I don't use markers that often and it makes sense when I'm blending them a lot and using a lot of color that because of the moisture the paper might buckle a bit. It's not something that is a deal breaker for me, but it's uh, something I wanted to mention just in case you want to try out this paper, it does buckle. Overall, I enjoyed myself quite a bit. Are markers gonna be my next favorite thing? Um, no, no, I don't think so. They are still very scary. Um, watercolors are quite forgiving because uh, well, you can always lift something up and you usually start off with a very light layer. So there's always room to improve something. But once you put down color with a marker, especially if it's like a very bright and bold color, 
Well, that's pretty much it. You have committed to it. And I don't think I'm the person to <laughs> commit to something in the beginning. But maybe that's just my lack of experience talking. And if I started to use them more frequently, they wouldn't seem so scary. I'm definitely gonna keep at it. And I'm gonna keep you guys updated with um, other videos about markers if you enjoyed this. And the markers itself, um, I hope you didn't come here for a review of these because uh, I don't have the experience to tell you whether these are fantastic or not. I like them, I like the brush nib, but I also never used Copic markers, which are probably like the best thing when it comes to alcohol markers. Um, they are way too expensive for me. Um, one downside of these is that they can't be refilled as far as I know. Wait, let me... Before I tell you something that isn't true... Can I refill? No, I don't think you can refill these. Um, I checked the website and I'm pretty sure that if they had some refills then they would sell them in their shop. So that is one downside. Um, other than that, I really liked it. Um, they are a little too juicy. With some of them, you need to be a bit more careful when you open them up. I definitely had some splatter going on. But other than that, yeah, I think these work totally fine when you're getting into alcohol markers. And I hope you enjoyed this video. This is pretty much it for me. Um, and uh, yeah, bye.